Hello there. Uh, we are considering uh, inferences that allows us to compare two population central values. Um, the motivation for this might be uh, how does a drug company know if uh, the, the a new drug that's on the market is better or as good as the current drug? Or how does um, how does a physician know that a particular treatment, not necessarily a medical treatment or a, a pharmaceutical treatment, but how do they know a particular treatment is better than the standard treatment? And so that we want to compare, in effect, two populations. Um, if you recall, uh, back in the previous module, when we were doing inference on a single population mean, we had to know something about if our standard deviation was known and also how large our sample size was. And really the idea of the standard deviation being known was kind of a fictitious scenario. Um, and the, the, the situation of, of sigma being unknown was more realistic. and. Within that context, we had the t-test and also the z-test when the sample size was large. Um, we, we do have similar considerations here when dealing with two populations, but we also need to think about if our samples are independent or dependent. Okay. So dependent versus independent samples. All right, so take a moment, uh, hit the pause button, read, uh, read over these uh, definitions of de dependent and independent samples, and look at this example, and identify within one and within two here which one's dependent and which one is independent. Okay. Now, okay. So hopefully you've had some time to look at that. Uh, Looking at the two examples, so Kaplan course is being considered. Is it is it worth the student's time? We want to test effectively two populations. One population would be all students who take the course, those who do not take the course. Um, and we can do that under a dependent samples approach or an independent samples approach. If you look at number one here, this turns out to be a dependent samples approach. And the reason is because you have one class and they take the, an exam um, and then the same class goes to the Kaplan review and then they come back and they take the exam again. So you have this before and after, this pre and post sort of situation and that creates uh, data that's paired on the same student or data that's dependent on the same student. Number two here is actually independent samples. That's because you have two different completely different classes that are taking this test one of them received the Kaplan review but the other did not um, and uh, there's no connection between the pairs of the data uh, from the two different classes as best we can tell so this would be an independent samples approach so um, why why would one want to even consider a paired um, samples approach, sometimes a dependent samples approach is called a paired approach or a matched pairs. Why would somebody want to look at that situation, that kind of sampling scheme? It turns out that it, it can eliminate extraneous, <clears throat> extraneous or confounding factors. And what I want you to do is take a moment and read this example and uh, identify which one's again dependent and which one's independent and think about the notion of uh, an extraneous factor. Okay, so after considering uh, the this example here and these two kinds of samples, um, this would be an independent sampling scheme and this one here would be a dependent sampling scheme. Now, um, just just to be clear, there's two the two populations here are uh, a, the population of people that would use sunscreen A, and the other population is the population of people that would use sunscreen B. And so we want to compare the two sunscreens. You could compare, uh, you could do that by t using two different independent samples, 
or in this second approach they use the same person and they apply sunscreen A on part of the back and the sunscreen B on the right on the left part of the back and then somehow the uh, a metric would be taken on the amount of skin damage um, due to the sun uh, and that would give us a sense of how sunscreen A and sunscreen B compare. And the second scenario is is really good for controlling this extraneous factor skin type. Um, whereas uh, scenario one would not be. Let me give you an example. Suppose uh, suppose that uh, the group that was uh, used to test sunscreen A on, A on that they were uh, naturally a little more dark skinned than those that were used to test sunscreen B on and uh, as a result you would you would observe less damage inherently within the first group because their their skin is is darker uh, and that might suggest that sunscreen A is better than sunscreen B but that um, actually it may not be the case because um, the skin type uh, is is acting as a confounding factor. It's getting in the way of seeing the effect of this of the uh, of the two sunscreens, and so um, being able to remove or account for the extraneous factors is an is a really good thing to do in statistics, and in particular, this dependent samples approach uh, often can can remove some extraneous factors. Uh, so how do we obtain paired or dependent samples? Well, here's four ways. One is to have a pre and post measurement on the same subject. That is actually the most common way. The before and after sort of study. Um, litter mates of the same gender that would uh, that could yield uh, dependent samples. Twins. Um, and we could also match people based on some characteristic and um, that would also create dependent samples but the the most common scenario is this sort of pre post situation okay this is an introduction to uh, two sample inference uh, comparing thinking about dependent samples versus independent samples now we move on to looking at in particular some methods within independent samples